The movie opens in 1962 during a tense period between the USA and the Soviet Union, who were engaged in a war. There were rumors that the Soviet Union would be dropping an atomic bomb on them in no time. In the midst of all this, a man named Calvin excavated a bunker in his backyard and stocked it up with supplies for 35 years. The following week, Calvin and his pregnant wife Helen threw a party at their house. It is during this party that they hear President Kennedy's plan to carry out a secret into the Soviet Union. Although the president does not elaborate on the mission, Calvin thinks that the war is inevitable. Without wasting a second, he sends all of their guests away and rushes to the shelter along with Helen. At that exact moment, the pilot of a plane flying overhead loses control of the plane as its engines malfunction and the craft crashes into their home, destroying it. Calvin is certain that the attack came as he had calculated. The shelter's locks, which were made to remain locked for no more than 35 years, are set to operate without any human intervention as soon as that happens. Convinced that he will need to wait at least 35 years for the half-life of the radioactive pollution vault, Calvin decides to stay in that nuclear bunker. Due to these tragic circumstances, the authorities and neighbors assume that Calvin and Helen were killed in the crash. With time, Calvin slowly gets used to life inside the bunker and even starts to enjoy himself. However, Helen does not feel the same way. One day, Helen goes into labor while Calvin follows his self-prepared instructions and assists her in giving birth to a boy who they name Adam. Days became years and Adam was raised in his parents' warmth. Slowly, Adam's mind starts to fill with visions of what lies above the earth. Calvin not only teaches him science, martial arts, and sports, but also politics. On the other hand, Helen teaches him social skills like dancing, grooming, and good manners. Calvin also tutors Adam on stock trading along with different languages. As it seems, Adam possesses a certain kind of genius with a comforting sense of humor. Over the ground, their house was sold and a cafe was built there in 1965. Later in 1975, the cafe turned into a pizza shop and then a nightclub by 1995. Ultimately, the long-awaited moment came in 1997 when the door of the bunker opened as auto-lock mode was switched off after 35 years. The whole family shares a precious moment after all the years they have missed, waiting for the moment to go up to the surface. Calvin says that he would like to step out first and check the environment in that place. He puts on his hazmat suit and heads up to the surface. On the surface, the ground suddenly starts shaking. Two homeless men who were sleeping in the area assumed that they were experiencing an earthquake. However, Calvin's sudden appearance on the ground shocks them, and one of them faints in horror. Calvin can't believe his house has turned into a bar. He finds that the world has changed beyond his expectations. Calvin is unable to understand a modernized version of English and finds that people are acting much differently than what he was used to. Calvin immediately returns to the bunker and tells his family that the outside air is fine, but humans have turned into irradiated mutants. To avoid any risk, Calvin decides to stay in the bunker for a few more years. However, this idea upsets Helen and she strongly objects to staying in the shelter any longer as Adam needs to see the outside world. Amidst this argument, Calvin suffers a heart attack and becomes sick. At the same time, they were beginning to run out of food supplies. Helen suggests Adam go to the ground and buy the necessary items. She gives Adam money and a shopping list. She also tells him to find him a life partner. Adam prepares to leave the shelter and visit the ground for the first time. Before he leaves, Calvin warns Adam not to visit the adult bookstore because it contains unseen toxic radiation. Eventually, Adam comes up to the ground, surprising the homeless man again. Experiencing the most basic things like seeing the sky for the very first time excites him. He can't believe his eyes when he notices huge buildings and the crowded streets. He greets everyone as he goes. When he comes across an adult store, Adam avoids it as instructed by his father. Then he hops onto a bus and feels awkward since it is his first time. To escape this feeling, he tries to converse with other people from his taught knowledge, but modern people find him quite strange and old-fashioned. Finally, he arrives at the grocery store and starts picking up the items from the list. The shopkeeper tells Adam that if he has a large order, he can deliver it to his place. At this point, Adam realizes that he has forgotten the way home and is now lost in the city. He flees in terror and tries to locate the place where the shelter is situated until later that night. Since he is running out of money, Adam decides to sell his father's plastic baseball cards. He visits a shop where the shop owner fools him and offers a cheap price in return for his valuable cards. There, he meets Eve who works at the shop. She intervenes and exposes the owner's dishonesty. She tells Adam that each of his cards costs much more than what he is being offered. She then quits her job and leaves the shop with Adam. 
At that moment, Adam begins to develop a crush on her. He asked her for the address of a hotel that his mother told him to stay at. Initially, Eve refuses, but when Adam offers her two of his cards, she agrees to drive him to the hotel. Along the way, Adam plays old songs that Eve thinks are odd for a boy his age, but chooses to remain quiet. The next morning, Eve has a change of heart and decides to return the expensive cards to Adam, as she feels guilty for paying a high price for driving him to the hotel. Sometime later, Adam asks her to assist him in buying groceries. In the short time that they had known each other, Adam and Eve developed a good friendship. Daily, Eve and Adam go to the store to purchase things from the list, as Adam is supposed to stock up for two years within two weeks. He also mentions to her that he is seeking a wife and asks for her help. He describes that the girl should be from Pasadena, California, as his mother advised him that a Pasadena woman is not a mutation. One day after shopping, Eve invites Adam over to her home. There, she introduces him to her gay friend, Troy. When Troy asks Adam about him, Adam replies that he is from Alaska. Eve requests Troy to give a makeover to Adam. Meanwhile, Helen feels restless in the bunker and decides to go out too. Upon arriving up on the ground, she encounters the homeless man and his fellows praying and immediately returns. The following day, Troy and Eve dress Adam well and take him out for staking for the first time. Adam experiences all that he has always wanted during his life in a bunker. He gets to swim in the sea for the first time and watch a real baseball game. Even rain is a miraculous moment for Adam. He thanks Eve for becoming his first best friend. At night, Eve takes Adam and Troy to a club, where Adam is supposed to find himself a wife. Soon enough, Adam comes across a woman and starts flirting with her. Eve does not like this, but she pretends to be okay since Adam has insisted that they remain friends only. Not long after, Adam takes the stage by Storm showing off his dancing skills. Seeing Adam dancing with another girl, Eve gets closer to her ex-boyfriend Cliff. This time, Adam interrupts them and provokes Cliff. Angry, Cliff attacks him, but this gives him a chance to show off his boxing skills, which he learned from his father during their time in the bunker. Eventually, Cliff gives up and leaves. Afterward, Eve walks out of the bar and goes back home alone. When Troy arrives home without Adam, Eve begins to feel anxious. She rushes out to look for Adam, fearing that he might lose his way again in the city. However, Adam shows up in front of her, scaring her and causing her to fall over and injure her knee. While Adam dresses her wound, she confesses her love to him. Adam also states that he cannot think about being with another woman apart from her. Adam then decides to let Eve know of his true identity. He opens up to her, sharing his family's story that they have been living in a bunker for 35 years. Adam hopes to marry Eve and then go down to the shelter to live with his family. However, Eve starts to think that Adam is crazy and decides to send Adam back to the hotel. The next day, Adam finds the abandoned bar where his shelter is located. He rushes to Eve's place to let her know about it. But when he gets there, Eve introduces him to psychiatrists since she thinks Adam is suffering from a mental disorder. At first, Adam pretends to talk to them, but as soon as he gets the chance, he runs away. Later that day, he comes back and asks both Eve and Troy to pack up his things and pay the hotel bill. Then he rushes to his truck with his belongings and finally rejoins his parents in the bunker. After two weeks, as Adam loads the things he has bought down at the shelter, the homeless men help him with the task. Back in Adam's hotel room, Troy and Eve realize Adam is not making up a story. They discover his things have been dating back to the 60s. Troy also discovers Calvin's valuable stock certificates that were worth millions of dollars in the present market. They realize that they have made a mistake since Adam had never lied to them. As Eve tries to search for Adam, Troy takes her to the abandoned bar, hoping to see Adam again. However, they failed to find him at this place. Just when they were about to leave, they noticed Adam rushing to the shelter. Eve immediately embraces him. At that moment, Calvin prepares to lock his family inside again for 10 more years. Meanwhile, Adam brings Eve to see his parents and she gets along well with Adam's family. Although they are hesitant to accept the truth, Eve along with Adam manages to convince them that they have been hiding underground for no reason. They explain that a plane had crashed into their house which caused them to believe they were being attacked. Two months later, Adam sells Calvin's stocks and builds his parents a new home in the country identical to their house that was destroyed in 1962. They all begin to live there and gradually adapt to the world outside. At the end of the movie, Calvin starts building another shelter. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and the notification bell to see more videos like this.